It's a quiet evening, so I figured why not take y'all on a tour of our gardens and yard as it stands in June. We've done a lot of work this spring putting in a bunch of new raised beds to, um, to deal with our heavy clay soil. We've got maybe 6 to 12 inches of topsoil over some clay hard pans, so we've got some pretty significant challenges. We're trying to build soil with wood chips as best we can, but we've done a bunch of work this spring, so I figured I'd take you guys on a tour. So right now, I'm standing with my back to the house. Here's our gooseberries and perennial beds here. Long summer raspberry bed just established with log raised beds from our woods. This stuff hauled out over there, a messy perennial bed. Some more raspberry beds up there. Apple trees, about a dozen plums, and uh, some new raised beds here with onions and potatoes, apple tree, chicken coop back there, more potatoes and whatnot. Um, woods and whatnot. Our house, our fleet of wheelbarrows for delivering chips from the local lumber mill. Um, topsoil to help bolster our beds a bit so we have a little bit more to work with. Plums, some willows for a very wet spot. Our wood boiler that keeps both structures warm where we work, the shop. And then coming out over here. Now oh, we had a party today, I forgot about that. When you're having a party with a five year old, all it takes is like 20 feet of streamers to make a day. Um, so apple trees, large established apple trees, a couple picnic tables, and blueberries that got taken over by grass. And thus far this spring we've pulled as much grass as we could and we're hoping to make it through the rest. There's 20 something blueberry bushes here in this brick. And hopefully by the end of this spring, early summer, they'll all look like this one right here and uh, be mulched and weeded. It's an ongoing project. Streamers attached to some cherry trees, pie cherries, um, do really well in zone four. Back here is our compost bin, three bin system, and we decided to put an arbor on it to support some grapes. And those bear enough for several gallons of wine every year. Pear. Bunch of rhubarb. Another pear. And now I'll take you through and into the garden. Yes, even more wheelbarrows. We must have a dozen picked up from garage sales. So this is the fenced garden where we keep deer mostly out of. With a four feet of goat fence right here. And just some a couple extra strings of... Um, they're, they're, it's electric wire but it's not electrified. Um, just to raise the height to close to eight feet. Um, 
in here. Most of this is our annual garden over here. Is more projects in process. There's about a dozen apple trees, some honey berries and whatnot. I'll take you over there in a minute. More apple trees. So this is the big project of the spring. Everything started out with log raised beds here. Just wood bucked up and hauled out of our woods. These have been here for about seven years now and it's kind of amazing how solid everything still is. Um, so if you want to try your log raised beds, it's, it's a cheap solution. Unfortunately, it's not very deep um, and our soil needs a little bit more depth. Right in this spot in particular, these tomatoes are struggling. We dumped on about four inches of compost, but this spot had absolutely no topsoil. It was just all subsoil, completely denuded um, on there. Even in four inches of compost, four inches is not enough. And they're yellowing and struggling a little bit. Here, I guess we dug down about a foot and a half before we planted that. So that's doing a bit better. So our plan, um, we tore out the logs, as you can see many of them are still here. And we're putting on these two foot deep hemlock raised beds. And the plan is um, to keep everything mulched with wood chips from either our chipper or the local lumber mill. And have these be our annual beds and, you know, dump trucks raceway for my three-year-old. Uh, and the outside to be filled in with perennials. And most of that, the most of perennials are already there. There's asparagus, chives. There's a very weedy perennial garlic bed there. Grapes, arnica, various medicinal herbs. Three more apple trees back there, along with a bunch of more asparagus. More apple trees, more grapes. Um, here's 4x12 strawberries. And this one I'm particularly proud of. Sorry, the dizzying turns. Um, this is going to be cucamelons on this side. They're really fun to grow if you haven't grown them. Uh, going up that side of the trellis, and then on this side, this is beans with peppers and onions all together. So sweet peppers, onions, and beans kind of all packed in this 4x6 bed. Um, try to get as much bang for our space as possible. This is herbs over here. Most of them haven't quite come up yet. Um, with cucamelons, onions around the edges, cilantro there. Tomato bed with everything really packed in. Back here, lemon balm in the corner, chives, apple, some rogue milkweed coming up that we leave because it's delicious and because butterflies love it. Um, here's going to be all chives. It's already seeded in but not coming up. It's got all torn up. The grapes come up pretty far off this fence. They're just starting to come in, but they'll take over half this bed, and chives do really well with part shade. Oregano as ground cover here. More log pile. And this final bed is just coming together. And it's currently a baby sandbox. Um, you'll notice at the bottom, we filled it with as many logs as we could stuff in here. So the bottom foot is log in a hoogle style to try to, well one, hold moisture in this dry summer that we're having, but also um, put some organic matter in there. Um, this is a Liberty apple. Oh man, this guy has fruited so many times already. They're so precocious and early and delicious. He's not very big, um, but we get a good crop off of this one every year and it's only maybe two inches in diameter. 
back here into there. I'm not going to go in there because you won't be able to see it. But across that tiny bridge and into those woods is where we keep our mushrooms. Um, it's pretty dark in there, but uh, you get some pretty good crops of shiitakes off of that. This is a new planting of elderberries that are pretty young and small still. Blackberries taken over this section still in log race bed and we're going to leave this one log race bed because blackberries just don't care. Um, this is a wild black cherry um, and he is really taken off so he's here for the birds, for the bees, for us, for everyone. More elderberry, tiny linden that took up residence so we left it. Tiny frog pond that is surrounded by all manner of stuff. There's some valerian there and a lot of mint. Aroni berries. Yet another wheelbarrow. And these guys are honeyberries. If you haven't had honeyberries, they're fabulous when dead ripe. A bit tart when under. And I'll come in, let's see if we can find one. Here's one. If it'll focus, it's not gonna focus, is it? Come back up. I'll pick some for you. Not exactly the best cinematographer. No, it's not gonna focus. Well, I have a fine article up on honeyberries. But you guys can see great pictures of them in there. You can tell this is my first video, right? So these are honeyberry plants. 